So I do realize that this video slightly contradicts the last video I made, but I do still completely stand by everything I said in that video. So I very recently just bought the Sony FE 85mm 1.8 lens. Now this is the first prime lens that I have ever bought and owned and it's fair to say that this has very quickly become my favourite ever lens I've ever used. And now that I own it, I can't believe it's taken me so long to buy it. I bought it second hand off the internet for £370, whereas brand new it is £500, so I got a bit of a bargain and it's pretty much brand new anyway. There's barely any signs of use at all on it. I would definitely recommend buying a second hand lens if you are looking at buying new lenses. But there is also a couple of other options within the 85 millimeter range for Sony cameras. There is the Zeiss 85 1.8, which comes with image stabilization. There is no image stabilization in this. And there is also the G Master, which is a 1.4 instead of a 1.8 like this, but that G Master costs 1,500 pounds. That is a hell of a lot of money. This costs 370, and yes, it's a 1.8 and not a 1.4, but you can't really complain at the price. So I decided to buy this lens because at work I've been using a Sigma 85 mm 1.4 on Canon cameras because I shoot Canon at work, whereas I use Sony here, so I decided because I liked the 85 mm lens so much, I was gonna buy my own for Sony. And it is such a versatile lens in so many situations for both photo and video. So I decided I was gonna get one. But what is so good about an 85 mm lens? Let's start with the most obvious thing, and that is the aperture. So as I mentioned, this has an aperture of f1.8, and that means that you're going to be able to let a hell of a lot of light into the camera and onto the sensor. You can see just how wide the aperture opens up at f1.8. And what that means, with all the, that light going into the camera and onto the sensor, you're going to be able to create a really shallow depth of field and create all of that gorgeous creamy bucket in the background, which looks incredible. And what an aperture of f1.8 or 1.4, if you go for one of the more expensive lenses, means is that it also performs incredibly well in low light. So the lenses I used before I bought this are Tamron lenses, and these are brilliant little lenses. This is a 28 to 75, but it has an aperture of f2.8. And while that is, that's good for a lot of lenses, it does mean in certain low light situations you are a little bit limited. And yes, with modern day cameras you can boost the ISO to like ridiculous numbers that weren't possible a few years ago with the Sony a7S III for example, you can shoot up to God knows what and you will not see any grain, but it's still really useful to be able to have that wide aperture and still be able to keep your ISO as low as you possibly can. And the difference between an f1.8 and an f2.8, even though it is only one stop of light, is genuinely really huge. 85 millimeters is my favorite focal length because it sits nicely in the middle of wide angle and a nice telephoto length. If you're using this for photography, it is absolutely perfect whether you're doing portraits, street photography, or even event photography because you can stay far enough away from people that they don't get uncomfortable around being on camera and you still get all of that gorgeous depth of field and compression that makes it visually appealing. Something I want to do very soon is to just take out this one 85 millimeter prime lens and do a day street photography. And I've even, I've even dug out my old GoPro and charged it up and I'm thinking I might get a chest strap and go out and do a bit of point of view street photography style video. So let me know if that's something you want to see in the comments below. But moving on to video, 85 millimeters is perfect for B-roll. Peter McKinnon famously uses an 85 millimeter lens for a lot of his B-roll. And if that's not a good enough reason to shoot your B-roll at 85 millimeters, 
I'm not sure what is. But that's not to say you can only use this lens for B-roll, you can't. It is so versatile. Where it looks absolutely brilliant is if you're shooting something like an interview and you've got a second camera off to the side, maybe a bit more of a close-up angle. This is absolutely perfect for stuff like that because you get all of that compression and depth of field. It just looks incredible. I love it so much. If I could shoot literally everything with this one lens, I 100% would. Now this doesn't apply to all 85mm primes because some of them can get quite large, but this one in particular, the FE 1.8 for Sony, is so small and light. And that is perfect for if you're doing something like portraiture or street photography because it does mean you can be much more discreet. You want to stay away from people so they're much more comfortable around the camera. Or if you are doing street photography, you don't want people to notice that you are shooting. Whereas if you have a big set up it's much less discreet and people are going to notice you and that's not anything you want to happen if you're doing street photography you want to be nice and discreet you want to have a small setup so you can capture natural reactions and capture things that are naturally happening around you and that is what this allows you to do and with it being so small and light it's not going to weigh a ton in your bag either it's not going to take up a load of space because you don't really want to be weighed down by heavy lenses, big lenses in your camera bag if you're walking around doing something like that all day. So as you can probably tell I am fairly obsessed with this 85mm Prime and now Primes in general because I'm fairly new to using Prime lenses. I've always used zoom lenses but having started to use Primes at work and in other environments there is a huge difference between using a prime and a zoom lens. Obviously zooms have their advantages and their disadvantages, as do primes, the same with everything, but the image quality that you get from a prime is night and day above a zoom lens. So I do realize that this video slightly contradicts the last video I made, but I do still completely stand by everything I said in that video, in the fact that if you limit your gear, you can increase your creativity because too much gear can decrease your creativity. Sounds a bit backwards, but it's true. But I still stand by that. But if you are gonna buy a piece of gear and you know you are gonna use it all of the time and you're gonna get your money's worth from it, definitely buy that piece of gear if you can afford it. But yeah, that video still stands as well. So if you are looking for an 85mm prime lens, 100% go for it. Whether you buy a second hand one, you rent one out to try one out, or you buy a brand new one or borrow one, just get your hands on one and go and try one out, especially if you haven't used one before, you will absolutely love it. So that's it for this video. If you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the algorithm and clicking that little subscribe button down below there as well if you like what you see in the channel and I'll see you in the next video.